The following is a presentation of Tomorrow's World. Have no doubts, this world, our world, is in turmoil. Today, even as I speak, the very foundations of civilization are crumbling beneath us, and yet few have any idea. The abyss of anarchy that is opening up underneath our feet threatens to swallow you and me and all we hold dear until nothing is left but a world we would hardly recognize today. Now, there is a solution, but we won't reach for it unless we first see the need to do so. Join us for this edition of Tomorrow's World, where we'll examine a civilization descending into chaos. Stay tuned. Greetings and welcome to Tomorrow's World, where we strive to courageously examine the news and culture of today's world through the lens of tomorrow's. Let me cut right to the chase. Our world is descending into chaos. Not just the chaos of warfare or crime, though we see far too much of that to be sure. No, this chaos is far more destructive. It is a deeper level of confusion that threatens the very foundations of civilization itself. And our nations, our society, cannot last long under its burden. We'll dive into many examples of this chaos today, and we'll also give you the opportunity to request today's free DVD, A Culture in Crisis. This material is controversial, but its conclusions are undeniable. Be sure to watch your screen for contact information to order your free copy. And our culture is in crisis. We face a world filled with a chaos that threatens to undermine and destroy civilization as we know it. And the cause of that disorder is clear. We are abandoning the designs, guidance, and boundaries set for us by a loving creator. The Bible gives us very important words in Psalm 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do His commandments. Yet we're growing increasingly far from possessing any sort of fear of the Lord, any sort of awe or reverence for Him, or desire to do His commandments and obey Him. Even though He says in Deuteronomy 10, 13 that those commandments are for our good, it is our increasing tendency to ignore the design, command, and will of Almighty God that is taking us into chaos. For example, let's consider marriage and family, the fundamental unit of human civilization. Not too long ago, marriage was a simple thing. One man and one woman bound by their creator in holy matrimony and sex was to take place only within the protective confines of marriage. But not anymore. Human sexuality and the institution of marriage is descending into utter chaos. The libertine sexual ethics of Woodstock and the free love movement from America's 1960s has never really left us. Sex began to be considered apart from marriage, and we now live in a world where quite literally anything goes. But sex and marriage can't truly be separated. And the anything goes approach to sex has now turned into an anything goes approach to marriage. An increasing number of countries now recognize not just true biblical marriage between one man and one woman, but also what has come to be called same sex marriage, where a man can marry a man and a woman marry a woman. Many are celebrating this supposed advance in our culture, but they now face a dilemma. When you move the boundary set by the Creator, where do you set it back down? After all, why stop at defining marriage to include only a pair of people? Why not three people? Why not four? 
Why not a marriage of five with two ladies and three men? Assistant professor of law at the University of Chicago, William Baud, took on this question in an op-ed for the New York Times back in July of 2015. He wrote, If there is no magic power in opposite sexes when it comes to marriage, is there any magic power in the number two? The deeper point is that we should remember that today's show-stopping objections sometimes come to seem trivial decades later. As we witness more experiments with non-nuclear families, our views about plural marriage might change as well. We should recognize that once we abandon the rigid constraints of history, we cannot be sure that we know where the future will take us. He is insightfully correct, but wrong on one thing. We haven't abandoned the rigid constraints of history. We've abandoned the guidance and the boundaries set by a loving God. And we're reaping the chaos as even the very concept of family becomes distorted, unrecognizable, and increasingly meaningless. At the end of 2016, Ontario, Canada passed a law taking mother and father off of birth certificates because that presumes too much. In fact, they now allow up to four parents to be listed for one child, each one acting in the eyes of the law as the legal parent of the child. Now, if that doesn't seem strange enough, consider the argument of Gary Marchant of the Center for Law, Science, and Innovation at Arizona State University. Writing at Slate in an article titled, A.I. The Wed, he argues that redefining marriage to include same-sex marriages realistically opens the door for people to marry machines and robots. As he put it, the issue comes down to the fundamental right of a person in a free society to choose the nature of the relationships and lifestyle they choose to pursue providing they do not unreasonably harm others in exercising their choices. Robot human marriage is not about robot rights. It is about the right of a human to choose to marry a robot. By abandoning God's design, we have become, within the span of a single generation, a civilization in which family and marriage have become so meaningless that children can now have four parents, and legal scholars are arguing that people have the right to marry machines. And believe it or not, the chaos of our culture goes even deeper. We'll examine more in a moment. But first, I need to take a moment to give you an opportunity to get today's free DVD, A Culture in Crisis. This DVD contains a collection of some of our most powerful programs to date. In fact, Many of you watching today haven't seen some of these programs because they were banned on some television stations due to the strength of their content. But we will not be intimidated. A Culture in Crisis examines some of the most controversial topics of our day in the light of reason and God's Word. Get your free copy today. Today's offer is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. Call now. 1-800-236-0531 or write to us at the address on your screen or visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org With this offer you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues and be sure to go to tomorrowsworld.org forward slash digital. Have a digital subscription sent right to your email inbox faster than postal mail. Visit us online now. Welcome back. As we zoom in on our civilization as it descends into chaos, we move from the destruction of marriage and family to something even more basic and changes that are perhaps even more devastating. Consider the growing transgender movement. It seems that a civilization that has produced thinkers such as Rene Descartes, Albert Einstein, and Leonardo da Vinci suddenly can't figure out which bathroom men and women should use. 
The Bible declares that God made sex and gender a simple matter. In Matthew chapter 19 and verse 4, Jesus Christ quotes the book of Genesis and says, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Instead of male and female, we're increasingly told by those seeking to guide public opinion that gender is a fluid spectrum of multiple options, and you can even change from one gender to another. The transgender movement tells us that even if you are born a boy, if you think you're a girl instead, then you are. And even if you're born a girl, if you think you're a boy, then you are a boy. It no longer matters what you are, it only matters what you think you are, how you feel. Now please understand, I am not trying to downplay or diminish the plight of many transsexual people. Many of them experience heartfelt agony as they stare into the mirror and are confused and scared. They don't always know why they feel the way they do, and many of them agonize over their feelings. But in the name of being progressive and enlightened, society is abandoning these individuals who need our help. Consider the admonition of Dr. Paul McHugh, the university distinguished professor of psychiatry at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. For 25 years, he was the psychiatrist in chief at the Johns Hopkins Hospital. In an op-ed for the Wall Street Journal, first published in 2014, he explained the plight of the transgender population plainly. The transgendered suffer a disorder of assumption, like those in other disorders familiar to psychiatrists. With the transgendered, the disordered assumption is that the individual differs from what seems given in nature, namely one's maleness or femaleness. Other kinds of disordered assumptions are held by those who suffer from anorexia and bulimia nervosa, where the assumption that departs from physical reality is the belief by the dangerously thin that they are overweight. In the case of someone with anorexia, where say a young woman is wasting away and becoming dangerously thin, but is fully convinced in her mind that she is overweight or obese, society still responds with love and compassion. We don't agree with her that she's overweight or obese just because she's fully convinced in her mind that she is. We seek to help her overcome her confusion, to see the truth. We seek to help her see reality. We seek to save her life. In the same article, Dr. McHugh highlights a long-term 2011 Swedish study of transgender individuals who chose to have so-called sex change surgery to make their bodies match what they think they are in their minds. Even though Sweden is one of the most supportive nations in the world for homosexuality and transgender lifestyles, the study showed that mental difficulties often followed the surgery, and the death rate by suicide for these individuals grew to almost 20 times the rate of the non-transgendered population. 20 times higher. But rather than slow down, society continues to rush forward into the abyss at full steam. In June of 2016, Scientific American discussed the possibility of giving men uterus transplants. And increasingly, we hear of families choosing to give hormone blockers to their very young children in order to prevent puberty and make future sex change operations easier. Dr. McHugh has plain words for parents who make such a choice. Given that close to 80% of such children would abandon their confusion and grow naturally into adult life if untreated, these medical interventions come close to child abuse. In contrast to a society that is devoted to ignoring reality, where even the words boy and girl have lost meaning, 
Jesus Christ declares in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. There is no freedom in the gender confusion we increasingly see being embraced around us, only shattered lives and a further descent into chaos. I wish we were done going down the rabbit hole, but in our next segment, we'll see that the confusion goes all the way down to the very core of what it means to be human. But before that, let me pause very briefly to give you another opportunity to request today's free DVD, A Culture in Crisis. The material is uncompromising and honest, so honest that some television stations refuse to air some of its contents. You need to see what others tried to keep from you. Your copy is already paid for and cost you nothing with no other obligations. Get your DVD today. Today's offer is yours absolutely free, no cost, no obligation. Visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. Find us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. For all the chaos we've covered so far on today's program, the confusion we'll cover here may be the most fundamental and damaging of all. Society has forgotten what it even means to be a human being in the first place. Is being a human being any different than being an animal? Or, or for that matter, a plant? You'll be surprised what mankind no longer seems to understand and the depth of confusion many now face. Again, there's clarity in God's word. In Genesis chapter one, we read of the creation of mankind. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. But the idea that mankind is unique and made in God's own image is vanishing from our society, and chaos and confusion is the result. For instance, look at the growing fascination with extreme body piercings and tattooing. When you don't see your body as a reflection of the sacred image of your creator, there's no respect for its integrity as something to be maintained and cared for. In a fascinating article on the BBC website in April of 2016, a young woman named Tas Kambitsi, who was painfully having every one of her 18 tattoos removed, made an interesting observation about the tattoo culture she had joined. She told the BBC, I was around a lot of damaged souls, and it's a common theme, I hate to say it, but damaged souls imprint themselves with tattoos. When we don't see ourselves as made in God's own image, the doors to becoming a damaged soul open wide. Losing sight of the special creation mankind represents, we no longer see the difference between ourselves and the animal world. In December of 2013, an organization called the Non-Human Rights Project filed lawsuits in New York seeking rights for four chimpanzees, asking the court to recognize them as autonomous legal persons. Increasingly, the philosophy of many reflects the infamous words of animal rights activist Ingrid Newkirk, who said, a rat is a pig, is a dog, is a boy. Yet the chaos and confusion goes deeper still. Several years ago, Switzerland notoriously added a sense of plant rights to its legal considerations, and a Swiss federal ethics committee produced a report in April of 2008 on the need to respect a plant's inherent dignity. When we consider the moral chaos that such thinking represents, then other growing elements of confusion and disorder in our society are not surprising. The free DVD that we're sending to everyone who requested today, A Culture in Crisis, has a special segment devoted to the issue of abortion. It handles the matter with sensitivity and facts in a way you've probably not seen before, and I encourage you to get your free copy. But stop for a moment and consider the raw statistics. 
The Guttmacher Institute is a pro-abortion organization that seeks to accurately report on abortion statistics. And in May of 2016, it reported that over the period from 2010 to 2014, there were 56 million abortions in the world every year. That is approximately equivalent to a September 11th terrorist attack every half an hour, every day, all year, nonstop. In the United States alone, there are 2,900 abortions a day, equal to nearly one September 11th attack every single day. The moment human life is no longer sacred, it becomes cheap. But the chaos gets worse. Having discarded God's definition of the sacredness of human life, ethics experts are sounding the alarm that we no longer know where to draw the line at when killing becomes murder. In February 2012, ethicist Alberto Giubellini and Francesca Minerva published a paper that caused a vast amount of controversy. It was titled, After Birth Abortion, Why Should the Baby Live? They argued that if it is morally acceptable to kill a child in the womb, it is just as acceptable to kill a newborn child even after it is born. Now, part of the reason that the paper was controversial was because the logic was solid and irrefutable, as even many abortion supporters admitted. Abortion and infanticide were morally equivalent. This is the chaotic moral wasteland in which we find ourselves. If human life is not sacred and we're all just animals, who cares if we kill our children? If human life is not sacred, what difference does it make who or what we marry or have sex with? If human life is not sacred, who cares if I ask a doctor to carve up my body and make me look like the opposite sex? In fact, who cares if it brings me misery, heartache, or suicide? If human life is not sacred, what difference does it make if I disfigure my body with extreme piercings or tattoos? If human life is not sacred, why should I have more rights than a chimpanzee or a house cat or more right to live than a tomato plant? If human life is not sacred, what difference does it make if our world descends into chaos? But human life is sacred. We are made in the image of God, and He has the solution to the chaos we are creating. We'll discuss that solution in our final segment. But before that, though, I want to pause for one more opportunity for you to request our free DVD today, A Culture in Crisis. In addition to an introduction with brand new material, the DVD contains three of our most powerful programs, Tiny Fingers and Toes, A Brazen New World, and What Happened to God. If you want the answers that only Almighty God can provide, you need this free DVD. Get yours right now. Today's offer is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. Call now, 1-800-236-0531. Or write to us at the address on your screen. Or visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. And be sure to go to tomorrowsworld.org forward slash digital. Have a digital subscription sent right to your email inbox, faster than postal mail. Visit us online now. Welcome back. How can we avoid this plunge into chaos? You know, the Bible begins with an interesting account that contains an important lesson about this very question. Let's begin reading in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. 
The words without form and void of verse 2 are translated from the two Hebrew words tohu and bohu. They indicate a chaotic, desolate state. After the original creation of the world, and for reasons we've explained on other programs, the world was in a state of devastation, ruin, and chaos, tohu and bohu. Out of this chaos, God forges the world we live in today. How does he do this? He does it by creating divinely ordained boundaries that bring order to the chaos. Consider it. In verses 3 to 5 of Genesis 1, he separates light from darkness. In verses 6 to 8, he separates the waters below the atmosphere from the waters of the air and sky. In verses 9 and 10, he separates the water from the land. In his wisdom, God brings order to the chaos by creating boundaries where there were none. As we've already read in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, God separates man from the animals, declaring only man to be in his image and setting him over the animals. He creates man and woman, distinct but similar. Again, a boundary, an order. Then on the last day of that week, he creates one more boundary, separating his own day, the Sabbath, from the other six days. A world described by Genesis 1 and verse 2 as being in utter chaos is, by the time you get to Genesis 2 and verse 3, an orderly, peaceful paradise, enjoying its first Sabbath with its creator. As God reviewed all he had fashioned out of the chaos that week, chapter 1 and verse 31 tells us, Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed... It was very good. God remains today just as capable of taking chaos and turning it into something very good. His laws and way of life are described in the Bible as a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And those who seek to find order out of chaos still seek Him as their guide. I pray that you will seek Him in this world of chaos and confusion and bring the blessings of order and clarity into your life and the life of your family. Please don't forget to order your free DVD, A Culture in Crisis. And don't forget to come back here next week. Richard Ames, Gerald Weston, and I will be here continuing to share with you the teachings of Jesus Christ, the good news of His coming kingdom, and the exciting end-time prophecies and their meaning. Take care, and we'll see you here next time. To take advantage of today's free offer or view today's program now or anytime, go to tomorrowsworld.org. Find us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.